cruise I'm on right now has inspired me to make this video. I'm a Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas and I've met many first-time cruisers and repeat cruisers who have tripped up and fallen for traps that are out there right now that cruisers are falling for that I want to make sure that you know about so you don't fall into those traps. Here we go then. By the way, if you're new here, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge, making it fun and easy to discover, plan and enjoy incredible cruise vacations. The most important trap of all to understand is that Cruise Line's objective is to get you on board at pretty much any cost because they make almost as much money from you once you're on board as they do from fares. So for example, a recent report I saw about Carnival, they took $9 billion in fares, but they're taking over $7 billion from passengers once they're on board. And every cruise line that I've seen them talking about to Wall Street is around how they're pushing more and more spend on board. Now, one of the biggest traps I think people are falling into these days is first of all, not understanding that they're gonna be spending a lot of money when they're on board and budgeting for it, but also thinking the cruise lines are giving them an easy solution. Many, many cruise lines have introduced these kind of specialty add-on packages, which supposedly turn your cruise into a much more all-inclusive fare. So for example, you've got Norwegian Cruise Line, the competitor to the line I'm on. They have their free at sea, which supposedly includes some Wi-Fi and dining and excursion discounts. You've got uh, Princess Cruises with Princess Plus. You've got Celebrity with Always Included. However, the thing I always say to people is bear in mind, if the cruise lines have introduced anything, it is because it is good business for them. So before you add on those things, whichever cruise line you're on, take a look at the detail. First of all, look at if you are buying things individually, what it would stack up. So for example, I don't drink alcohol. So many of these packages do not financially work out for me. So first of all, do that calculation. Secondly, many people come on board and are then disappointed because they discover that the package is not what they really wanted. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. So Celebrity is a sister cruise line to Royal Caribbean. It's the same company. They're always included. Talks about it includes drinks, it includes Wi-Fi. However, it's a classic drinks package, which is very restricted on what is included. Wi-Fi is very restricted on how much Wi-Fi you can use, which basically is just email, a little bit of surfing and some social media. You can't stream, do video calls. So make sure that you check what you're actually getting. It's not necessarily the best package and a package that's right for you. And you're gonna have to then pay much more to upgrade it once you're on board. Another trap I came across a couple of people falling for, and I've seen that on many lines, is bidding for upgrades. Now, cruise lines no longer really upgrade people so much based on loyalty. They try to get people to pay for upgrades. I've come on a number of cruise lines where people got really excited, caught up in the bidding process, and actually realized afterwards that they've bid more than if they'd simply booked a higher grade cabin. I met a lovely couple on Celebrity recently where they had bid for a loft suite only to discover they actually had paid more than if they'd just booked it in the first place. So before I boarded this cruise, I received about four different emails encouraging me to upgrade and bid. So if you're going to bid, check, check, check what it would actually cost you at that point of time to actually physically upgrade because you probably also can choose your actual cabin. Also really important, the other trap people to fall into if you're traveling solo, like I am, is the bid is always based on two people. So even if you're solo, you're gonna pay for two people. So watch the bidding process really carefully and generally bid low. The next trap is one that I have so many people contacting me about. In fact, even people who were on this cruise before it started. Now, I'm a big advocate, if you've watched my videos before, around tracking fares. And there's a number of different sites that you can do that on. And I have a, a link on my blog, Tips of Travelers, which tells you the sites and how to do it. However, what people are discovering is they are finding that when the fares go down, they're not able to get cruise lines to match the lower price. And the reason is cruise lines are becoming a little bit more tricky. So what they're doing is when they're doing promotions, they'll often build in terms and conditions now which say that the price is locked in. What they say is the price won't go up, but it also won't go down. So many people are seeing prices going down for cruises, but are, the cruise lines will not budge because they say you've booked a fare which has a term and condition where you cannot reduce the price. The second key thing is if you book often with say an online agency, online cruise agency, bear in mind that often you cannot change the fare because many of those are selling effectively a group rate. They're, they're selling a 
bulk amount of cabins. The cruise line has given them a specific deal for that and it will not change. Now I learned that also because when I was setting up some of my own group cruises is if we went with a group rate it, if, and fares went down, they you know, people would not be able to lower the fare. So we actually went with a more flexible fare, for example. If you think the fare is going to go down or you're worried about the fares going down, check when you book if this is going to be a fare that if the fares go down, you can ask for, if you haven't paid the full balance, you can ask for the lower fare, you can ask for onboard credit or an upgrade. One other critical trap is one that I actually initially fell into on this particular trip, but luckily uh, one of the barmen actually pointed out I was missing out. And that's to make sure that you absolutely understand what either your loyalty level or your cabin grade includes. So for example, I, uh, although I haven't cruised on Royal Caribbean very much, am diamond status because of my cruises I've done on Celebrity. And when you're diamond status, there's a whole bunch of things you get. So for example, you get four free drinks up to the value of $15 per day uh, in any of the bars and so on. You also get access to a diamond lounge where they have evening canapes and continental breakfasts and some concierge help. And then they have a very special event just for diamond and above members. So make sure that you understand what they are now. I went and hunted down from the diamond lady when one of the barmen pointed out, asked me if I wanted to use one of my free drinks. I went and got from her this leaflet, which then tells me exactly everything that's included. Cruise lines don't necessarily always tell you about that. So make sure you ask, go to the loyalty manager. What are my perks? What can I get? Speak to your cabin steward and find out what you can be getting uh, within your cabin uh, and make sure that you get exactly what your grade or your status, even if it's just low status, gets you. Don't fall into the trap of missing out by not asking. One really important trap that I've seen so many people fall into, some on this cruise, but on every other cruise, I've found people fall into it. And this is the trap of not looking at and understanding what you're signing up for. What's really important to understand is when you book a cruise, you are automatically agreeing to the cruise line cruise contract and terms and conditions are many, many traps and things that you could trip up on without even realizing. First of all, cruise lines have age and various restrictions around, you know, for example, how young kids can be before they can come on or certain rules around if you're a certain stage of pregnancy when you can come on board. And I've found that it differs a lot by line. So you need to make sure what they are if you have young kids or you are pregnant or plan to get pregnant. Other conditions where I know many people have had problems on, including someone I met on this cruise, is what the rules are around name changes or if you want to change basically the people on the booking. These days they will perhaps charge a small fee if you know you're, you were traveling with someone and they're not coming anymore, you know, some friends have had to swap in and swap out. Check the rules because some cruise lines used to have in some of the contracts that I've looked at where it actually would count as a cancellation. If you're traveling with kids, every single cruise line has different rules around whether kids can be in their own cabin. So for example, here on Royal Caribbean, the rule is as follows that if you're under 21 or 18, if you're not selling out of North America, kids can only be in their own cabin if it is adjacent to you or across the hall from you. Uh, they can't basically be in a separate cabin somewhere else. Or there has to be someone in the cabin who's 21 or 18 if you're not selling out of North America. So there's really rules around where the kids can have their own cabin. Carnival, for example, says that kids under the age of 13 cannot be in a cabin by themselves, even if it's next door or opposite, uh, with a balcony. So each cruise line has different rules in their contract. So make sure that you check those when you're booking if you're traveling with kids and want them to have their own cabin. Also, perhaps if you are 18, between 18 and 21, uh, and you want to drink and gamble when you're on a cruise, you'll find again in the cruise contract different rules. So many cruise lines that are selling out of North America will hold the 21 years and above rule for drinking and gambling. Many cruise lines, even if they're American cruise lines selling out of Europe, which we are doing at the moment, will reduce that to age 18. So those are some of the main ones, but I wanted to pull out the next one that's in the cruise contract as a whole separate trap, because this is a really big, important one. When you book a cruise, do not assume that the itinerary is locked and will not change. The cruise lines in the cruise contract will say that they can change the itinerary before the cruise 
or during the cruise for what they would call operational reasons. And I'll give you a really extreme example of that. On my cruise before this one, which was an expedition cruise on Hapag Lloyd, Greenland and Canadian Arctic, because of the whole situation with ice, the captain scrapped our entire itinerary and changed it completely. I always say to people, if you're booking a cruise because you want to meet a long lost friend in a particular port, beware because it, you may never get there. And also importantly, you'll find that the cruise line in the contract normally says that they can do it without compensation. So for example, on a recent Windstar cruise, a port was dropped because of weather and we were offered nothing, no extra credit, credits, no, nothing at all. So it's really important the, the itinerary is kind of a guideline and they obviously try and stick to it because that's the, there's so much infrastructure and plans and excursions and things around it. But really important to understand that the itinerary can and will change. Now there are a bunch of other traps that happen around packing that I talk about in this video where I look at what as an experienced cruiser I no longer bring with me at all and things I bring instead to avoid some of those traps. So why don't you join me over there and hear about the things that I never ever take cruising again. See you over there.